In this video, we are going to induce a trance-like state as we drift away from the world of the mundane and have a look at the spirits in Mithras. What are spirits? Where? Why do they exist? And what are their scales? Well, all will be revealed. Just close your eyes, listen to my voice, and come into the world of the spirits. My name is Inwills, and welcome to the In Crowd. Hello and welcome to this second video in which I discuss about the animists from the rule set which is Mithras. Now in the first video we looked at the concept of the animist and the important skills that they have and thank you for everyone who shared how they include animists in their own games and campaigns. It was really great to hear from you all and you have some excellent ideas. I also said that I was no expert on the animus and you should let me know if I got anything incorrect and thanks to Matt on the forum for pointing out my mistake in a private message. Thank you. Save me being embarrassed across the whole forum. Anyway, um, I made a mistake and I'm going to read you Matt's reply so I get it correct this time. So excuse me when I read off the screen. Okay, he says that when you discuss the binding skill, that's me, you show on the screen largest spirit equals 10% of screen uh, skill. But this is not what you say in words and is not correct. What you say in words in the video is correct per page 131 of the core rule book. You take crit times three as the highest power of the spirit that a shaman can bind. You may want to correct the video or issue some kind of, well, yeah, correction. And this is it. Consider yourself, myself, corrected. So in this video, we're going to look mainly at spirits which exist on the, in the spirit world. First, I'll cover some basic concepts and then we'll get on to their abilities, powers, where we can find them, etc, etc. Now, please remember that when it comes to concepts, they all have to be adapted for your own campaign worlds. Indeed, some of us might not include animus at all, but after hearing more about them, you might just want to introduce them. So, what are spirits? It is important that we look at the life and death cycle um, when we're discussing um, spirits. If you, the concept that is mentioned in the core rule book and one which I think fits nicely into my campaign is that all things have a spirit. This spirit is permanently attached to the physical body and has no independence of its own. This is when it's classed as their soul. However, when the physical body dies, the spirit is released and flows onto, um, into the spirit world. Here it can exist until it's reassigned to a new body, almost like reincarnation. Now, whether these are animal, human, or even plant spirits, this cycle continues to happen. If anything, spirits and the spirits world are the perfect form of green recycling. Now, there are some spirits which do not adhere to this form of existence, but more about these later. Spirits tend to seek company of their previous state. So wolf spirits will stay and enjoy the thrill of the pack of hunting by accompanying the mundane wolves across the plains. Forest spirits remain in leafy glades and even human spirits in the form of ancestor spirits remain with their nomadic tribes, journeying with them on their annual migrations. They remain until they are reassigned to a body for physical existence. Once they are assigned, then they can no longer interact with the spirit world until they are, or the spirit is released again via death of the physical body or pushed out of the physical body when it's possessed by another spirit 
or when the body enters a state of trance when it can then release their own spirit to travel into the spirit world. We talked about this in the last video when we were talking about the skills which are important to animists. Now there are some exceptions to this. Elemental spirits have never had a physical body. They are driving the elemental force from the spirit world. As storm spirits roam the spirit world, their presence is felt within the physical world in the form of heavy rains and wind. The earth elemental can be calm and relaxed, in which case nothing will manifest in the physical plane. But if the earth spirit is enraged or angered, then the ground will shake and the rocks will topple. In a similar way, disease and sickness spirits roam the spirit world, allowing their effects to manifest in the mundane world. They spread plagues and incurable diseases. Sometimes they might come to rest in certain place and just linger, causing misery and death. Similar to these spirits are the ghost or haunts. Usually in death, the spirit is released to be recycled or to pass on to an afterlife of some description. But in some cases where death, the death of the individual is violent or unjust, the spirit remains at the location, causing unrest until it's either satisfied or released. Just by writing this and talking to you within this video, I am more and more inspired by the concept of animists and spirits. Just by writing this and talking to you about them in this video, I am more and more inspired by the concept of animists and spirits. But before I tell you about the stats and abilities of this spirit, please consider liking, commenting and subscribing to this channel. I produce regular videos about Mithras as well as actual play sessions and personal blogs or vlogs. Soon I have already started to produce some videos about GMing and so why not subscribe and press that bell button to get a notification when my next video goes live. Also, if you would like to provide some additional support, the link to my Patreon page is in the doobly-doos or the comment section below. Also, if you're interested in any of the adventures, I provide a behind the scenes video on each of these about how I created the scenario and how I thought it went. And my adventure notes are available on my website free of charge or for a small donation. Just go over to my website, which is inwills.co.uk. Okay, back to spirits, I think. Enter that trance. Okay, so what are the stats of these spirits and what powers can they use? Well, the most important stat of any spirit is its intensity. The intensity of the spirit is determined by its power characteristic. The higher the power of the spirit, the higher its intensity and the more benefit it will be to the animist um, or the mo more havoc they can actually rage. Now, there is a table on page 133 of the core rulebook. If the spirit originates from an animal on the mundane world, then it uses the power of that creature to find its intensity. So, for example, if there was a bear spirit, um, you would look at the critter section of in the core rulebook to see what average their power was and then relate it to the intensity of its spirit on page 133. Humans will generally produce spirits of intensities one or two due to their power score. There are many more spirits of the lower intensities with the spirits with larger intensities being few and far between. And when you hear about the abilities, you are probably going to be extremely thankful for that. Spirits can be controlled and the intensity almost like suggests the, um, the number of animists or the power, the, the range of power the animists actually need to control them. Lower um, intensity spirits provide very little to the animist, but the 
big ones, the high intensities um, spirits tend to need a large groups of shamans or animists working together in order to hopefully control them. The spirits with low intensities have little effect on the mundane world. Um, larger in intensities would have larger effects and if the spirit has an intensity of zero it has no effect at all. Now my mind is already racing about huge hurricane spirits which approach the coastal areas of Odess and a number of shamans are gathered chanting in an attempt to control it while the mundane people flee and the theists pray to their divine beings. It certainly gives me goosebumps thinking about it. As well as the power or and intensity of the spirits, the spirits have other characteristics as well. These are intellect or instinct which reflects the intellect of the spirit when it was alive or the corresponding instinct and charisma which is the spirit's personality. Now from these attributes other characteristics can be calculated including action points, initiative bonus, magic points and also spirit combat damage. You can find um, a table within the animus section with all these on and the let latter spirit combat is based on the spirit's combat skill and can be found on a hundred page 131 of the core rulebook. The final aspect of the spirit is its attitude. Now these can this can range from friendly through neutral to hostile. This will rely on the relationship with the animist or, it, or its clan. Also feeding relationships um, which exist in the real world cascade into the spirit world. So if a wolf shaman meets deer or rabbit spirits then the latter will feel uneasy or maybe even bolt for it. So if your animist wants to gain a spirit to support and aid them, where can these spirits be found? Spirits can be found throughout the mundane world, but they prefer areas which are remote where there is diminished um, interference from other magics. These locations are heavily influenced by the actual spirit. Forest spirits will linger deep within the forest, while sport storm spirits probably linger far out at sea, enjoying the freedom of the open space in the sea. Lots of space to wreak havoc out there and maybe trash a few sailing ships as well. Ancestor spirits will inhabit clans medicine lodges or nomadic beasts will wander the plains with its companions. Animus will also know the nuances of these spirits that the clan is associated with. S snake spirits will be less aggressive after a large meal, while eagle spirits will be more aggressive if trapped and unable to stretch their wings. Once the Animus knows which spirit they want to commune with, they need to find the spirit and the animist can locate it in a number of ways. First of all, they could scour the mundane world using their trance skill to view the spirit plane on the off chance of noticing a suitable specimen. I think that will happen in my campaign. Or they can shift fully into the spirit world to search for a specific spirit. They can journey to the location within its tradition where the particular spirits are, are known to resign, reside or they can have someone of a greater skill or rank or knowledge summon a known spirit for the animists. Now once the spirit has been located then the fun starts. They can either negotiate it or bind it. Now. Before we look at how animus can do this, we need to stay with spirits just for a little bit longer to see what powers these spirits actually have. Now a full list of all the spirits and their abilities can be found starting on page 143 of the core rulebook. The list of abilities are quite vast and include everything from healing to, well, withering. These skills really allow the um, spirit to come to life and to support the animists. Wolf spirit can dominate other wolves to run with their pack. 
Animate allows elemental spirits to bring rocks and trees to life. And shape changing is an ability that allows the animist actually to take the form of the animal spirit. Bless is a spirit's ability which is used a lot about animists and we'll talk about this and curse in the next video. I have spent some time looking through the spirit's abilities and each one gives me another idea for a campaign or a storyline. If you're familiar with the actual play sessions, you might already have a sneaky feeling where warding is actually coming into play. And that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll be looking about how the animus controls and gains benefits from the spirits. This is the probably, that video is probably the one that you're all waiting for, but I think it's always important to have a solid foundation before we dive into the good parts. So, until next time, I hope all your opposed roles are successful and reward you with a well-deserved special. Happy Mithrasing, everyone. See ya. Bye.